But y'all can't tell me nothing that I already, I know what I got to do. I got to get off this bike and I need to get my ass in there because I need help. My legs messed up. Look, I would have, I would have appreciate RC like popping the Achilles back in the day. Shoot, I'd have, I'd have been bummed. That's not the way I would have wanted to win, but I'd rather win than not win at all. So, you know, Chase Sexton, don't listen to that crap. Well, one thing, having a softer bike, even though it's more comfortable, sometimes you can get a motorcycle that's too soft. And what I mean by that is like when the front end moves so quickly, like uh, too much of a double D on there, you don't get the feedback on your hand. What's up, guys? You know who it is. It's your boy, JS7. And you know where we at? We at the Rebound Show, baby. Round 16 from Denver, Colorado, where we had ET close on the verge of wrapping that championship up. We only had one guy left, and that was Chase Sexton. But what happened this weekend was a lot. A pop heard around the world. Everything's changed. So you know what we got to do. Round 16, Denver, Colorado. Let's get into it, people, because we got a lot to do today. So round 16 here in Denver, look, I'm going to make it short, people. That track was hard as a rock. I thought it was going to be hard as a rock. The privateers looked just as good as they did last weekend. I thought the setups would kind of translate from how um, Nashville was into this weekend. So shout out to all those guys. They wrote good. Justin Hill, Josh Hill, Kyle Chisholm, McElrath. All that track was hard as a rock. Blue Groove looked like California test tracks. And next weekend probably be the same thing. Look here, I'm not wasting any time, people. What happened? Well, I mean, what happened? We went into this week all year long, all of last year, when Eli has to do stuff, he's been that consistent guy, always there, no, no big issues. And this, this year, we kind of seen some incidents. I mean, what happened at the Triple Crown in Anaheim going down? Oh, Eli Tomek's down! He had a couple more like, you know, ET moments, got that eighth place, that fifth place, just things were off. But we never saw this. We never kind of thought that he would really get into this situation. And boy, he got in the situation. No fault, just racing. And I will remind you guys, like, as I've been talking about how his bike is that suspension, maybe being not as good in the transitions. I actually think that's what really caused this issue. And before I dive into that, we'll get into those details. But Look, it, it, this weekend got blown open. I was shocked when I was watching the race, and I saw Eli rolling around the track, and I knew it. You know, when, when dudes be hurt, they don't even care. You saw how that dude was. Like, he hit that, he popped that thing, and then the AMA guy was over there, the Astro guy. You noticed that face, that helmet. He was not caring about anything. That brother was hurt. That brother was hurt. So I felt for him. It's like when I crashed in Washougal in uh, 2007. Shit, you better not even talk to me about a race. My, my knee's jacked up. My knee's hanging in the back over here. Don't even bring it up. Members of the Asterisk medical crew attending to him. And that left knee is the focus of their attention. That's why he rode back to the pits and, and he went straight to the Asterisk thing. So, man. That's that's crazy, and how great this guy has been. Um, it's it's hard to see that. It's it's hard to see um, him just go out this way. And I do believe that's the last time you ever gonna see Eli Tomac race a motorcycle. And if that is, then I'm I'm proud to say I've been a part of it. I've been able to call this. Um, but unfortunately, I think him, everybody in the, in the stadium, Chase, even Chase, you know, like that's not the way you want to go about winning things. But it's been a privilege, Eli. You threw me your goggles a few weeks ago, your Oakley goggles, so I appreciate that. But damn, dude, I feel for you, but you have nothing to hang your hat on because remember, you were supposed to retire last year, so this is all good. So uh, it was a strange night of racing, so it got even stranger. And I think everybody watching it, I know you guys are at home. I was at home watching it. So it was weird for me being at home because I've been on the broadcast with your boy be back this week, so I'll see you there. But we were like, wait, am I dreaming? Because that's literally how I was. I was like, am I? It, did, did I see this or is this like a parade lap? Because last time I checked, that dude was out front. And before anybody says it, I, 
Chase might have beat him anyway. Like, Chase was kind of riding. And if you go off that heat race, I actually thought Eli rode good. Like, I thought he did what he was going to do. Chase was faster. Chase passed him. But I thought Eli looked really good in second place. And the places where Chase was faster, Eli could have, like, you know, made that difference up. But I just saw him sticking with him. And um, so who knows? I mean, there was no way he was not going to get second. Not the worst so if the worst case scenario he'd have been 15 points going down into next weekend but he's out front kind of gone did what he did last uh last weekend got a pretty decent lead chasing in the back of the pack and coming up and then next thing you know you see him rolling on the side of the track and that was the end of that so um i'm kind of dumbfounded really it's a, a situation that i i personally have been in but i personally i don't remember seeing that i don't remember seeing anybody popping achilles like, that's one thing that um, I was, like, shocked to see. It seems like we've seen a lot this year. A couple weeks ago, we saw lightning on there. The race home was getting canceled because of lightning. And then we saw, like, the Cooper going out. We're like, whoa, what's this? And then Anderson home with Cynthia. What's, what's her name again? Excuse me, Jason. No, no. Siggy and Sonny. Somebody's with Sonny. You got Barsha out. So this whole year, everybody's been kind of in it. And then the last three weekends, like, bang, 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 bang. Everybody just did. And Eli Tomac, the red holder, all the work he's done, star racing Yamaha. That's it. Chase Sexton's your champion. And well-deserved. People already start saying this and that. And I'm not even getting into that. Chase Sexton. Congrats, kid. But damn, Eli. I feel for you, brother. That thing popped and you was like, the diaper factory is closed immediately, immediately shut down the doors. All y'all can go home, cancel it, done. Don't even talk to me about a damn diaper. I'm out. Don't even bring it up. So get well whenever you get well, and I'll see you where I'm at. So Eli Tomac, all year we've been talking about how his, his bike's been set up, and I felt like this year there was a... Uh, I wouldn't say a weakness, but if you want to say a weakness um, compared to last year, last year, he kind of looked good everywhere. This year, it was really like the transitions. Um, it felt like he he didn't really trust the front end when it got like slippery, trying to fill it, um, fill the bike where it was and also in the transitions. Now, thinking about it now, what's going on, to be honest, like what happened this weekend is not surprising. Like it's surprising that it happened, but it's not surprising when when I think about how these transitions and all year he struggled in those like he's when the thing gets super deep those rutted tracks he he just takes a step back he doesn't feel comfortable um there's practice sections this year where he was like at oakland a couple times when the bike before they even show it on tv you know you're watching on a peacock on the the race day live and you can see him coming up short on these things or somebody doesn't trust it well you would you would wonder okay if if he's struggling in transitions, then that means like he'll have more traction. So the transitions, like he, he's been struggling like all year. You can see it on practice when you're watching race day live. You can see these things where he's like unsure. The one aspect about that is like, I believe it's his bike is soft. I believe there's something that's going on when the thing gets super low. It, it just, it bottoms out on a wallows or whatever you want to call it. And that makes sense to me when you think about when you get to these slippery tracks like how Tampa was, um, where it's like that icy, slippery He He's cautious. Like, he doesn't feel comfortable in that because you can't feel the front end. Well, one thing, having a softer bike, even though it's more comfortable, sometimes you can get a motorcycle that's too soft. And what I mean by that is, like, when the front end moves so quickly, like uh, too much of a double D, on the, you don't get the feedback on your hand. So I believe what happens with Eli when he gets to these other slippery tracks like Tampa, not necessarily this type of slippery because this was like a blue groove dry. And just like I said with Nashville, there's a the track could be the same kind of slipperiness like as far as how slippery it is. But something about a dry slipperiness, you still get a feedback and you, or you can physically, I mean, visually, you can tell where those spots are. So something um, even though it's just as slippery as Tampa, like you, you know what's going on just by from what you see. Where Tampa is, is different when it's dark dirt or Anaheim or that shiny where moisture comes out, like you can't see that because it just kind of looks like glassy. It looks different. So back to my point, I think when Eli, if you look at his transitions, how his bike is super soft, 
if you have the bike too soft, you can't get feedback in your hands. When you can't get feedback in your hands, you can't tell where the front end is. You don't have no idea what's going on with that wheel because you're not getting um, feedback. And so that's why I said when you visually, if I visually can't see how slippery that track is when it's dry and blue groove, then I got to go rely on the feel. And if I can't feel, then that means like I'm taking a chance of like, well, I'm just going to hope that it's slippery. I feel like Eli was in that situation this year. Instead of him just hoping, he just said, look, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to ride until I feel it. And then I'll turn. And that's what you saw in Tampa. And that's when you saw a few races. So that same, I believe the same feeling he gets from Tampa is the same feeling he gets when he gets in these G outs. So the bike is possibly too soft. He can't feel it. And then when it gets low, he feels it because the thing bottoms out. He's looking down at his bike. Oh, he's what has happened? He's holding his leg out. Oh, what? my goodness. So when Eli overjumps that tabletop, and I wouldn't even really say he overjumped it that much. So when Eli goes over that table, he's in between that transition. The bike bottoms out. Now, where it goes wrong at, Eli's expecting the bike to rebound. It, when it goes all the way down, usually, even if you bottom out, the thing rebounds on you. And so Eli overjumps it. The bike bottoms out like it has. He kind of knows that. He's expecting the thing to come back up. It doesn't come back up, but he's expecting it to, so he's lifting back up. So it's almost like you're um, you know, landing on something and you're trying to jump. You know how if you're jumping on a trampoline and you're double bouncing with somebody and you miss it, you miss time it, and then when you land, you're springing back up and it doesn't react, like you just like, bam, like it's a hard hit? That's what happens to Eli, and I believe when he's doing that, it's the way like he's lifting up and that thing is like the double bounce on the trampoline. It's just a dead hit. He's lifting up, which makes him extend his ankle, his legs and all that. And I think that's where the bike is. His legs are still going down all the weight still like there. He's lifting back up, which stretches that thing and it probably pops it. That's what I see. So, so when Eli goes over that tabletop, he's in that transition, the bike bottoms out. Same thing has been happening all year. If you go back to New York when he lands off the um, in practice, hand blows off, like the thing gets low, it it bottoms out. He's expecting the thing to rebound on there. When it rebounds, things are starting to come back up. When the bike rebounds, it almost acts as suspension. When it gets low and it doesn't rebound, like for instance, this situation, it's like landing on two by four. So he goes over that tabletop in that transition, it bottoms out. Now, unlike most times, when his bike bottoms out, you still get a rebound. And he was expecting that rebound, the bike to come back up. It doesn't come back up. And it's all set up because he was expecting that bike to rebound on him. And when it doesn't, it, it just all this weight, he's going the opposite way than the body. All that G-force just snaps it, and that's it. And that's why when you look at him when he's going, he's like, you can see him kind of like crunching up, like he's pulling up, and that bike's hanging down. And um, he comes up short. He doubles the next one. He realizes something's off. Because usually when you get hurt, just like I did my ACL, like I popped it, there's like a second that you're like, wait, that was weird. And then the pain shoots. That's why Eli cases that next jump and then he goes to jump it and then whatever. I never popped an Achilles, so I don't know that pain, but I could tell from the way that look was, he knew it instantly. I ain't racing anymore ever. You know, it's not even a question whether I can do that. And I think that split second of, wait, did that just do the, ah! That's what happened, and um, he rode off. So um, all year we've been talking about suspension, bottoming out, and I think he got caught in between the double bounce. It didn't react the way he wanted to. So it's tough, but that's my opinion. After Eli realizes, look, something's not right, as a rider, you, you just know it. Like, I, I can only go off of, like, experience. And, and other guys, they get hurt. They're in these situations, but I don't – I don't remember having, um, you know, I don't remember seeing anybody at this particular junction like, look, you just kind of, this thing's basically wrapped up. You're winning the race and you go down, um, like going through this. So mentally, other guys are getting hurt. They might be leading races or they might be in championship hunt or leading points, but not like this close. So what's going through Eli's head, I, I think it was pretty simple. Like I just remember in 07, like when I did my knee um, in Washougal, Second moto, I'm in third, and suspension, had a blown-out shock, came up. Look, 
I just know, like, no matter what, I'm winning this championship. That wasn't even really a thought. I was just trying to come up and win overall. I go down. I blew my leg out. There was no thought even about racing again. Like, I knew right then my leg was done. So it almost made it, I was almost numb to it. Like, I knew I was out. And I think that's when you're looking at his face and he's not emotional because he knows it's over. Like, there's no point even really getting too emotional about it. Like, there's the thought of, like, man, could I have done that? Can I get back? It's usually when you start getting that up and down roller coaster. When you know, like, it's done, like, there ain't nothing that, like, anybody can do. You just know, like, look, I'm done. Like, that's it. And so I think Eli's emotion was kind of like the same thing with mine. It's like, of course, you're hurt, you're bummed. But to be honest with you, like, at that moment, the championship is really the last thing he's thinking about because he knows, like, there ain't nothing I can do. Like, I landed, my legs pop for whatever reason, like, bad luck. You can say whatever, I, I did something wrong. It, all I know is that, like, I can't walk. And there's no need to even, like, say anything else. And that's why he asked the AMA guy, he asked the uh, Alpine Star people, where is the, the, the truck, the medical truck? Don't even talk to me about this race. I know, look, you think he was caring that he was rolling off the side of the track, that he might get black flagged? You think he cared about that at that point? You notice he didn't even stop by the mechanics? <laughs> he, look, I ain't, see, you ain't got to tell me nothing. Like, shit, I'm trying to go back to that, that uh, Alpine star. I don't even need no Jeremy Coker. Like, I appreciate all the support you done gave me. I appreciate my mechanic. I appreciate the old lady. On the, I appreciate the truck driver. But y'all can't tell me nothing that I already, I know what I got to do. I got to get off this bike and I need to get my ass in there because I need help. My legs messed up. I can't even feel my toes. I don't even know what it feels like, but I just know something's not right. That was your Eli Tomac. So where his head was, his head was like, ah, I need to get in that truck. And that's what he did. So damn Eli, man. 51. It was a pleasure. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope that ain't the last time I see you. But if it is, people, come on, Cole. Let's give it for him. Suntan, next on fire. That's for your career, Eli. That's for your career. And you threw me a goggle, so I'm a little, like, biased, whatever. Like, I like, ah. That's for you, Eli. That's for you. I know, I know it is, but, like, I know it's tough. Maybe it's not even tough because, like I said, said, like you just get numb to the situation. Like I don't even, yeah, yeah. it's like a man when he wakes up, my back hurt. You better not ask me to. You tell that rod to clean the lawnmower? Shit, my back hurts. Like you ain't worried about it. You ain't had that guilt. Eli had no guilt. Like I, you see my leg hanging off there? All right, you better not ask me about that. So that's where his head is. So the last two weekends we've had. Um, incidents that has been a big swing in, in championships changed the whole year you you race all the way till round 15 then one thing happens in the heat race changes everything oh and cooper webb goes down oh. and he gets clipped for the rider oh, oh this is not good as cooper webb is down and down hard all right so last weekend it, it was in favor of eli tomac right he knows the way cooper like I hit, he goes down, he's looking back, he sees Adam hit him, he thought he'd have ripped his head off. He knew kind of right then that, look, he ain't going. But he confirmed it when he didn't show up for the LCQ. So we were sitting there like, okay, how is he going to react? You know, how is he going to react? Is he going to be like, keep racing and all this? Yeah, he goes out and runs off. Like, look better than he has like in the beginning part of the race than all year. So this weekend, it's his turn to be the victim on that. And Get well, Cooper. Get well, Eli. Chase Sexton's in that situation. Chase comes out. He knows, like, look, I probably just seven days ago, I did the same thing. Started where I started, and I caught Eli. Eli's not going to put up a fight. You see, Eli don't have to beat me. Eli probably just stay there, but there's really no worries. I don't think Chase was really worried about Eli. He thought he was going to beat him because he just beat him in the heat race, and he beat him seven days ago. I feel like he was going to beat him the same way. Eli goes out front. Chase keeps rolling. He wins. Chase passes and wins the race. No big deal. So Chase sees Eli on the side of the track. Uh-oh, whoa. He knew at that moment that Eli was hurt. There's a difference when you watch a guy off the side of the track. You can just pay attention to him. Like if he's like gassing it, trying to get back on, okay, he made a mistake. He went off track, but his ass come back on there. When you see a guy off the side of the track and he just like sitting there, you know he ain't coming back. Like he's done. And Chase saw that. 
He sees Eli on the side of the track. And trust me, people, he heard the crowd. He can feel the vibe. He saw the tension. We know what's going on everywhere. We know. Like, shoot, I'll look at the, the big screen when I'm racing somebody, see if they're coming on the inside of me, or I listen to the crowd. So we know, even though we're focusing, and Chase loves to focus in on this front fender, he saw the big picture, and the big picture, he knew Eli was out. So his mechanic didn't even have to put it on the pit board. Like, he already knew. And you could tell he would have saw Eli at some point. I guarantee Chase was riding those next few laps. If he didn't see Eli riding down the side of the track into the thing, he probably was, like, looking around to see – is he around? Uh, is he coming up? Like, do I hear? And the fact is, he would have known it by the crowd because if Eli would have got back on that track, he would have heard them like get loud and start cheering their boy on. But they didn't get loud. So that's another sign that he ain't racing. And at some point, his mechanic would have probably told him like Eli's coming or Eli's in like 18th. Just be consistent. Mechanic didn't put anything on the board, whatever. He doesn't hear the crowd and he looks around a couple laps. He doesn't see Eli. If he didn't see him rolling down the side of the track, which I guarantee he probably did, um, he knew instantly. So what does that do for Chase? I think with Chase, like they probably got like a weird part in that race where he was like, all right, when he got the lead, he had that six seconds and maybe Roxon was possibly coming up. He made a mistake in the whoops. Um, but I think the fact is like he was just kept riding the same way and nobody was really catching him to the point to where like really catching and make them have to do anything differently. So I, I don't know how difficult the race was on, on chase compared to where, let's say last weekend, if he had to start that race, knowing that dude, I got to win. I like, I need a win. I'm going to take over the points lead. And if I win, if I get 19 points this week, I'm your supercross champion. That's a whole different, like feeling lining up on the gate, knowing that you just need to get 19 points and this championship's over compared to like, all right, this, all this stuff just happened. And even though Eli's not in this race, you, you still don't know if he's like out, like officially, he just might be out for this race. Um, you might have to show up next week. So you go up through the pack, pass in, uh, Cincerella, which is your friend. You got Ken Roxon, which is your friend. There's no real threat. Cooper Webb's not in there. So you know, like he's not going to do anything because he ain't there. So I think the whole feeling and situation around him, the track being slippery, um, there was really nothing for him to to really try to change his opinion. Besides, like, I'm going to just have to finish the race. I think Chase rode great. Um, There's a lot of pressure that was put on him, knowing that Eli was out. He needed to do that. But I think th the fact that it was in the race helps that compared to if this would have happened in the heat race, lining up on that gate, who knows what would happen, um, how he would have rode. But he rode good enough, and that's why he will be your Supercross champion. So... That's his mindset. We haven't really spent too much time on and given props to one. Shout out to Adam Cincerella. Great job, kid. So happy for you. I don't care. You can cry. You can still be crying today. Nah, that dude, you should be. You should be. And all the people like saying so. Shout out. You know how emotional this is. You saw how like Hunter Lawrence was crying last weekend. And you saw Cooper crying for the opposite reason. There's a lot of emotion. A lot of people be crying these days. And it's because there's so much damn emotion in this racing and this is what we look for so where adam's been at and where adams is now i don't care who's out there it's the fact that he is and he got a podium which is well deserved i'm lost for words um this last couple years is has taught me a lot taught me a lot about myself and um i'm gonna be honest with you i i, I wasn't sure if i would ever be up here again and i think for all of us fans we gonna need adam we need Adam because my boy German Chocolate, he's going overseas over there. He's going over to the world, race the world supercross. Cool. In which he was looking good. I was actually starting to look forward to him racing outdoors, but he's got bigger things. He's doing other things. That's cool. So we need Adam out there because, hell, like somebody's got to race Chase and Jet. Otherwise, it's going to be a Honda, Honda Suite, maybe Ferrandez. He might be coming back. I don't know. But um, so shout out, Adam. Good job. Everything's been about Eli. Rightfully so. I mean, there's this that's big news. I mean, it changes everything. Why do we why do we even go racing? I mean, why do we even go racing? All this stuff, all this stuff that happened in weeks, you know, 15 weeks prior just changed right there. Um, but Chase Sexton, Chase has been right good. Chase won the last three out of four races. So he's trending in the right direction. And I felt like 
the way he was attacking, going for, like, was the right thing. Like, I don't think he was focusing in on the championship. And, you know, hindsight, since he wasn't focusing in, focusing in on the championship, championship happened, and it's his. Like, he wasn't even ready for it. It's just his. Um, but let's just go back and look at Chase's how he rides and where he makes up time because it's pretty – when watching it, you would just think it's pretty simple, right? If you look at right before the whoops, they got the double um, before the whoop section. Um, Chase goes to the rhythm section. He passed like Colt Nichols at one point. You look at Colt, he sits down. When he sits down off that double, he's hitting a 90 degree, and he's hitting that next double right before he goes in the whoop section. He's sitting down. The reason he sits down because he doesn't want to lose the front end. By sitting down, keeps weight on that tire. You know what's going on. It's kind of back to that that Eli thing of knowing what the bike does. That feedback, sitting down takes a chance of, you know, to wash front end washing. But it's slower. Why is it slower? Because when you sit down with that double being so close out of the corner, you have to seat bounce that double. So you have to be sitting down. So you're going to shoot up high. If you watch Chase, Chase is standing up. Chase lands off that, that double, turns on the inside. He's standing up. Coach sitting down. Chase goes Hits the next double. He goes forward. Cole goes up. Now, if you look at that particular, so the, the double to the 90 to the double, yeah, he chased maybe a quarter second or something like that faster. Where he really gains his time is because he's not hanging in the air. When Colt lands, he has to build momentum up to go into those whoops. Chase doesn't have to do that, so he doesn't have to move his body. He's landing. He's got that momentum, and it allows him to make that difference up in the whoops because Colt's yeah, right, 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 trying to build the momentum. Chase already has some momentum. And so you really see the difference when he lands off that double going into the whoops. What that also does is because Cole has to build his momentum up going in the whoops, it brings in more chances because now you got to build speed up. You got to move your body, try to get traction going into it. It also changes the way at the end of the whoops. So if you build the momentum up trying to get it going, then you have to slow down compared to if you got that momentum going in there, you starting to set up. You can set up for the end of the whoops in the beginning part of the whoops. And so there's a lot of change that happens, a lot of things that happens in that short period of time because one guy sits down and the other guy stands up. And because one guy sits down, he has to move and do all these other things to make up the time that this other guy doesn't. And so when you watch around the racetrack, and we've been saying it all year, Chase just goes through the air, like the rhythm section, he goes for it. The reason he's going for it because he's standing up. So when you watch on TV, you're like, damn, like, all right, he's faster there. Watch how quickly he catches Eli. He's, like, just standing up. Eli does the same thing. He sits down, he goes up, Chase goes forward. Uh, but the negative to that is when we watch Chase, we're like, damn, dude, like, he just fell over. Like, he's, like he's hanging on, and then next thing you know, he's down. Well, that's the negative part to that. So there's a fine line to, to doing that. And I do believe a guy like Eli, like, he kind of did pick up on that, Um in the heat race, that's why he kind of stayed with Chase. And if he had to, Eli can go faster other places to where he doesn't take that chance there. Or I feel like Chase, his speed is like there. And if it ain't there, if he's not making that much time up in those type of sections, then I think it, it's more of a struggle for him. Where I feel like Eli can maybe lose time or he can pick that up, but he's also good in other spots where he can make it up different um, places. Um, so it's just a way that these guys ride. Um, but the negative again is when the guy goes, you lose the front end, there's no room for error. If Chase is where he passes, um, um, Colt Nichols, if Chase's front end washes on that corner, he's down. There's no foot out. There's nothing. He's going to be hanging on the handlebars and he's going to be on the ground where if you're sitting down the thing of slip, you can throw a front end down. I mean, throw a foot down and you can save it. So that's the differences, um, where Chase is making up time to these guys and why he's doing it. But again, my point is, if something looks so simple on TV, which it's so blatant where Chase is making up that time that you would be like, why are these other guys doing it? Well, if it looks that simple, then it ain't that simple. Like, I think Chase makes things look easy because he's a talented rider and he's good. And when everybody else, I wouldn't say everybody else, but most of the guys aren't doing that or they don't maybe not do it in that particular section and they know that it is faster. And trust me, all these guys know that it's faster because we got video. We got this dark fish. You can put two people on there. You can put Chase and put myself. And I can see where Chase is faster. So they kind of know that. The fact is, it looks so easy on TV. Then why the hell they ain't doing it? Because this guy is making time up from right there. Um, 
makes it it ain't that easy and the chance for them to actually do that whether it's uncomfortableness or they don't want to hit the ground whatever that reason is they ain't doing it and so when i'm watching on tv like js would have knocked it i would have knocked out i would have fell right there because i couldn't let it like i'm like damn like this dude's making this too much time up then i has to do it then well these guys are like i ain't doing that i'll just make it up somewhere else but it must not be as easy as it looks because it's pretty blatant and it's pretty obvious all year long where chase makes that time up and um those guys just do it a different way so you know that's why maybe chase has fell more times than these guys you can say whatever you want but all i know all I know, and I don't know if we need to say any more because there was a lot heard around the world. There was a pop. Eli shut down the diaper factory instantly. It was like COVID. We were all hanging out, and the next thing, ah, don't touch me. It was just change of the world. Nobody expected this to come. We, The broadcaster is like, uh, uh, they didn't even have it on replay. We didn't even see it live because nobody expected that. And what they didn't expect was Eli like out front and then Eli in the asterisk or Alpine star. I'm sorry, people, I keep saying it wrong, but just habits are habits. And what Chase has a habit of is winning because he's been doing that a lot lately. What has he been doing, Cole? Suntan, next on fire. Chase Sexton, you are I know it's not official, but it is official unless Eli straps somebody else's leg on there and goes. It's not like NASCAR where you can just jump on that bike and then ride. You are the 2023 champion, and I'm going to say it for you. Everybody else that's saying, like, ah, he shouldn't be there. Shut up! You know how hard it is to win these damn championships? I only won two of them in this class. So, look, I would appreciate RC, like, popping the Achilles back in the day. Shoot, I would have been bummed. That's not the way I would have wanted to win, but I'd rather win than not win at all. So, you know, Chase Sexton, don't listen to that crap. Look, you got to survive. Like, my boy Chad Reed, you got to be in it to win it. He used to hate when he said that crap. I'm like, damn, why did I hate it? Because I wasn't in it. I wanted to win it. I wasn't in it to win it. So, like, he was right. He used to hate it. Chase Sexton, you deserve it. Look, I don't care what anybody says, a 450 Supercross championship, you can sit there and say they cheated. Well, technically, you cheated, right? That's why they took the seven points. You can be like, you know how many points I gave, I gave away because I was winning and I wasn't winning? Yeah, so look, all I'm going to say is that most of the races, you've been the best guy. You've been the fastest guy. You have more poles and fast laps at the heat race um, of the main events or practice. So it's not like you just inherited. I would even say this championship's different than back in 2020 when you won the uh, with Austin Fortner going out in Nashville. Like that, I don't even know if you won that night. Actually, you didn't win that night. You won the next weekend and you won the championship. That was different. All right, you could say he wasn't the fastest guy. And when Austin went out, he wasn't even fast guy, but he came back and he won. It was a championship. And I know it bothered you because we worked together and we talked about that. You wanted to whoop ass next year, which you did whoop ass because you were bothered by people saying that. Don't let them fools kid you. This is a 17-round series, okay? It does not win championships by racing 15 of them. That doesn't work on there. And you are racing 16 so far. In, all, in your case, all you needed to do is really race 16 of them, and you are the champion. So before anybody says anything, I'm going to say it for you. Shut up, people. You know how much work goes into this stuff? You know how many times that dude done hit the ground? And he's hit it a lot of times. You know how many times we said, damn, Chase should have won, but he didn't win? Well, that's, that's the case. Like So he... You could say he was probably the best one. He was the most fastest. I could name a few categories where he was the best. So it ain't a championship that he inherited. He won that thing. He won it straight up. And congratulations, kid. You are the 2023 450 AMA Supercross champion. And no one can never take that away from you. So congratulations. Hit it for him again, Cole. Suntan, next on fire. That's for you, Chase, for you, Eli, and for you, Cooper. All three of y'all. Y'all just flip, flop, flop, flip and flop. Next thing you know, like, the guy that was down, way down, all of a sudden wins the championship. Wait, that's cool. Like, he was, like, down. Like, way down. Like, way, 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 way down. Like, 20-something points down. And then he wraps the championship up a race early. 
in like three rounds, this dude only takes two to wrap championship up. So, look, he's been playing. This was his plan all year long. More power to you. He wanted to wait it to last minute. And he was like, bang, bang. And all I'm standing is the champion. And you are. So, enjoy, kid. And congratulations to Honda. They haven't won championships art since RC on there. It's been a long time. So, look, they went, they actually having a, a, a cool three weeks. Like, imagine that. They got both brothers, which we know all about. When they're winning the championship, you had Hunter, congratulations, won it last weekend. Jet, congratulations, you won it this weekend. And Chase Sexton, congratulations, you're going to win it next weekend. You don't even have to race. You're going to win it next year. So imagine how many parties and donuts and guitars and hair salon visits, whatever you want. Imagine all that these next three weeks. It's going to be popping off at the people. Shoot, I'm going to have to get me a guest pass to go over to Honda because I'm going to get some free it's like showing up at the, the golf tournament on a Tuesday when it's like the pro-am. Like, you get drivers and stuff. Shoot, I don't even want to play the tournament. I just want to show up on Tuesday, Wednesday, because that's when they give out the free stuff. That's what's going on in the Honda. So, you know, Lars, all you guys up there is well-deserved, and it just shows the Honda's always been a powerhouse. But the sport's better when Honda's doing good, just like the sport's better when Lakers and Celtics, the Yankees are good. Honda's always good, and these guys bust their ass on there you know and again shout out from back in the day eric kehoe on there it's been a long road of work to get back to this position and they just dominated and don't be surprised in like four months people that we say damn honda won everything because i actually think they might win everything they might win this 250 outdoor title and the 450 outdoor title and if they win those two then i'm pretty sure they're gonna win that next one so it might be a red rain and red but if they just won all three of them this year, that's well-deserved. Congratulations to all everyone at Honda, from Lars to Shane to Eric Kehoe and Jay Dungey. I know they're not there, Cole, but they've been a part of it, and they've been a part of success. And every one of those, Lars, Shane, all those guys would say that. Even Chase, Jet, like, look, people change jobs. People go different ways, but that doesn't mean they were there to help support and bring Honda back to the fullest. And so, should I give myself congratulations? Congratulations, James. You were there too. But hey, it takes a lot of people to make this situation happen. And this situation just happened. So, just wanted to give a shout out to all those guys. Um, well deserved. And, and same thing with Star Racing Yamaha. They've been a powerhouse. On that, Jeremy Carker been like making Eli when he goes to ET. And he's like, damn, I don't even know. Like, you see this face? Like, that takes. That takes stamina. That's a lot of sleep this night. That's gray hairs on there. But he knew when he saw that face this weekend, he's like, hey, this is different. This dude don't got a leg. Next. Outdoors is next. Parandas. Ula, bula, shake, I smith, ma. We need you. We need you back. Because our other dude, he's out. So congratulations to all those guys. And again, shout out to my German chocolate. Looking good, Ken. Have fun over there. AC, it is good to see you back. And only one left that's kind of like, what up? I know he fell, and they didn't even mention it in the, the race, but I'm going to mention it. Colt Nichols, bruh, I need you. I need you. If you get a third place, which just, just finish the race, man. Just finish the race. I think you get third on there. I thought you can get third when everybody was there, but please, please, if you can do that, then my whole prediction on how this whole season well, I mean, there might be some other things that I said that might not be right, but I did say you were going to get a podium, so make me do So just finish the race. I think you get third on there. Colt Nichols, you went down. They didn't even show. I don't know why you went down, but you need to get third for JS, and then we'll be good. All right, people. Wait, first off, before we do that, congratulations, Donut Man, Jet Lawrence. Well-deserved. We knew it was coming. I know it's special. You won East, West, and outdoors so they look you in this club on there i think we're the only people so far besides maybe zulu warrior grant langston um now you know what you got to do now you're moving up to the big boy class after you knock your brother down this weekend y'all should just go straight up head on hunt hondas don't even care knock everybody down because y'all like you time you're gonna ride a 250 and you might as well beat your brother because like shoot who knows what happens in a year and y'all going outdoors, then you get to race your champion, your teammate, which is a 2000 Supercross champion, and you know he's going to want to get in that ass because he don't want you to come up there in this 450. So I'm excited to see what happens. It's going to be a Red River show, and hopefully the Ula Bula Shit Captain Squad, Ferrandez. So congratulations, Jet. Donuts for everybody. Well-deserved kid. Look good. 
RJ, good ride. Oh, no, you tried passing dude on the outside. Levi slipped a little, like, I don't know what he slipped. He slipped a plate on there, slid you off the track. I don't know why Levi's like, damn, and look, he can ride on the outside of me, but I ain't going to let him ride on the outside of me. But he did you dirty. He could have pushed you off. But, RJ, you kept coming. Look, you got a victory. Congratulations, Levi. You're looking good. 250 class is going to be bomb this outdoor season. Hopefully far east coast. We got Danger Boy. I'm still feeling dangerous. And then we got all these other guys coming in here. So top of the field, Honda and far east coast. But look, there's a lot of other people. So congratulations, Jet, Honda, all the Lawrences, and then um, Chase Sexton. Well, there. hit it for him real quick, Cole. Suntan, next on fire. All right, people, that was it from Denver, Colorado. Well, we did not see the hometown hero finish that race off, but he's a hero in most of the eyes. Get well soon, Eli. But that was it from round 16. Uh, but first, before we go, we got to go to Oakley, Stude, and Stude. We'll be right back, people. They say an object in motion tends to stay in motion. We test that idea on a daily basis. Motion and experimentation, motors and manpower. We continue to evolve and thrive. So whether you climb or cross over, find your own line or pin it wide open, as long as you're moving in a way that gives you what you need, we'll be here for you. What's up, guys? You know who it is, your boy JS7. I want to welcome AG1 Nutrition as my second sponsor. Now, listen, listen. The secret's been like, y'all been wondering how I got a little good looking, my skin glowing, got a little skinnier. Well, this is why AG1 is a nutritional drink, and I ain't kidding with y'all. I do this every morning. That's why I feel good. That's why you hear me on here, come in here like, just on my toes. So I'm proud to have them as a sponsor. It's easy to take in the morning right before I go this or take right before we do the show. Also, they got a lot of vitamin Ds. They got some other vitamins and supplements. But now that I'm back in the spotlight, traveling to the races, I started taking Athletic Greens to help energy. You know, when I stopped racing, a lot of things stopped. I blew up, energy levels down, my skin wasn't looking good. Gotta have good looking skin with this smile. So I started taking this stuff and it's really helped me a lot. Uh, my mood swings, my gut, everything. So. If you want an easy solution to your supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Make sure you go to athleticgreens.com slash Bubba's World. Did you hear me? Athleticgreens.com slash Bubba's World to get yours. And then you can look as good as me or you can look like Cooper Webb on the 52's JS 2020. Not a good look. Check it out, people. All right, people, you know what time it is. My favorite time, your favorite time, Oakley, Stu, and Stu. Now, this weekend is a little dear to my heart, and I'm going to change it up. I'm going to change it up a little bit, but I want to give a shout out to my boy, Eli. He's going to get a Stu. Why he's going to Stu? Because a whole career, right? Like, he's just, people, we've been watching something great, and it's just been happening, and I know he goes this way, that way, but the dude's been great. And he's second all time on that list, 51 on there. I'm like, damn, he's like, he got one above me, and he, but he's in front of me, which I don't even mind because he gave me his goggles that time. But Eli Tomac, it's been a privilege to race you and watch you race, and it's been a privilege to watch you change. And I bought me some diapers, and everybody else has. And you were still halfway retired, not retired, and still giving them boys the business on there. So, Eli Tomac from here and all the fans across the world. If this is the last time we ever see you race, it was a pleasure watching you race and well-deserved. So Eli Tomac, you a stupendous stew, all-time great stew. You the man. Now my next person, of course, we've been talking about him all year. Dude's been fast. 
Dude's been fast leading races and then he crashes. Dude's jumped on red flags. They took that points away from him winning the races. Dude was riding. He was like, damn, that's what that feels like. And now he's going to be like, damn, that's what that feels like. What does it feel like? I'm a super cross champion. So Chase Sexton, you have been in it to win it. As our famous Chad Reed quote said, I hated it. But he was right. You got to be in it to win it. And three weeks ago, two weeks ago, you were in it. But you were just really in it trying to win the race, the war, like that particular battle. But you end up winning the war. And I would even say you put the pressure on Eli, which made him overjump that because you were, your presence was making it happen, whatever you want to say. But Chase Sexton, congratulations, kid. Again, Supercross champion. I know it's not official yet, but it's official on there. You don't even have to show up this weekend. It's official. Um, you are a stupendous stew. And congratulations, of your champion, Chase Sexton, you a stew. And my next stew is, of course, Donut Boy. His brother won one last weekend, and he wins one this weekend. Even though he didn't win it, even though the kitchen was up there running it, and the kitchen ran out of gas, whatever, and RJ came in there, which are you a stew, you got yours done. But you look, you don't even race like that. You race in the future. And the future said, like, look, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to win the title. I know that's my future. I don't care what these cats are doing because they in the past because I already won this thing. And that's what you did, Jet. So you are a stupendous stew. Congratulations, kid, on winning it back-to-back East-West. It's like Biggie and Tupac, you know, like East-West, you know, what's up? What up? Not a lot of people know what that feels like to win those two. Uh, and you do. I do. And I know it's special. So congratulations, kid. You a stew. Now take your brother out or your brother needs to take you out and then y'all need to go outside and give them boys the business, which I'll be calling out too. So I'll see you there. Jet Lawrence, congratulations. Chase, stupendous. Eli, stupendous. RJ, stupendous. Everybody, stupendous. Now my next list is confused. I'm not even playing around with the stew list. Pissed off because you're just mad. Pissed off because you're a look. You like your uh, fruit roll up got rolled up in the back of your quad on there because your Achilles is done. You're not even pissed about that. You're like, damn, that hurts. I already know what's up. Are you pissed off because the bike's too soft? Are you pissed off because the rebound didn't do what you thought it was? Nope. You worried about getting to the diaper place to shut it down, cut it off because I'm hurt. I'm hurt. So we ain't stew. We confuse. First people on this list is all the people on this list is Everyone in that stadium, everyone watching TV, everyone was confused except for Eli because he knew what happened. We were all sitting there like, what, what? If we, wake up, Jay, wake up. Am I dreaming? Are they on the prey lap? Are they showing like a highlight or something? Why is he off the track? Chase was came by, he was like, bah, 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 looking at his finger. Ah, dah, dah, man. That's odd. Da, da, da. That's how you went. Everybody else was like, damn, what's up? We had McArath, Chiz up there, Josh Hill. Like, damn, like, why he lie over there? On there? He ain't trying to get back on this track. And then the AMA guy was like, hey, you need, hey look, I wouldn't cut this thing. And he was confused because he was like, why this dude holding off? We all confused. And we were confused because we were watching something that didn't make no sense. And that's the definition of confused when you're just like, damn, what? I don't even know what to say. It's confusing. We all are Everybody watched the race, RC, calling the race, Diffie, calling the race, people, Bevo, filming the race, telling them where to go. Like, he was like, damn, I don't know. So we all confused people because we did not expect that. And again, that is the definition of confused, which is Eli Tomac confusing the hell out of us this weekend. And Chase Sexton is a super guy champion. What the heck? What? What? It's confusing. So all of us on there, we confused. And I don't even know who else to put on there because that ain't, I don't even think anybody really needs to be, Eli's not confused, like I said. So, people, you got your stews, which is tremendous stews, which is Eli's on that list. And maybe that's confusing to some people because he didn't win. And Jay said, I don't really give up, but he deserves one. And Chase on there be like, hey, well, I mean, is he a default? No, hell no. Nah. He ain't default. He won that championship. Is Jet up there? Like, I know they keep saying that. Like, we knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. And it came. So, like, he should be. No, he's a stew. But the rest of this, when we all watched that race and we showed up and some people showed up on Sunday and looked at those results and saw Chase Sexton was a champion, like, on there and pretty much champion. He ain't got a race this weekend. He went from, like, 21 points down to wrapping the race up early in one weekend? It's confusing. 
And the next thing you know, you start focusing for outdoors and then you just keep going. So although it's confusing, it gets straight pretty quick. And that's why we go racing. And that's what we say. It ain't over until it's over. And it wasn't over, but it is today. It's confusing. And that's all from round 16 people up at Mile High Stadium where we had Chase Sexton and Jet Lawrence. And last week in Hunter Lawrence, it's been an all red sweep. It's like the in the Bible. What is it? Like the red tie comes through there and get some things i know before you even say anything i apologize if i don't say it right but i do know it's read something and just keep the comments to yourself but congratulations to the whole honda racing team and again jet lawrence honey lawrence and chase sexton well deserved and i'll see you guys at round 17 at salt lake city and i don't even know what we're gonna do up there i don't even know i think i might go skiing i'm gonna be the black Sean White this weekend. You might catch your boy on some slopes. So if you don't see me at the race this weekend, just know that JS got knocked out on the slopes because I ain't never been skiing. But me and my boy Todd Harris, we might be going skiing this weekend. So if you see this black dude up there doing flips and stuff, it ain't Sean White. It's JS7, baby. I'm here. See you guys in Salt Lake City.